Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the next of the four Boris Karloff Mexican films. In Spanish it was called Invasión Sinestra, which means Sinister Invasion. Uh, it was released in the United States as Alien Terror, which sounds exciting, but it's not really that exciting. Uh, so, the movie is just like the other one we talked about, um, which was Isle of the Snake People. It's where Boris Karloff is acting in Los Angeles, and the rest of the movie is done in Mexico City. Although this one, unlike Isle of the Snake People, is supposed to take place in the German Empire in 1890. So for some scenes, it kind of has like the hammer aesthetic where it's, you know, supposed to be a period piece. Although Boris Karloff is just wearing a white uh, lab coat and tie. So it definitely doesn't look like he is in the 1890s, but the rest of the movie kind of does. So anyway, um, if you remember, there was one in, they were all made in 1968. One was released in 1968. That one was called Fear Chamber. There was a guy in Fear Chamber who was like, of course, Boris Karloff is playing a scientist in all these movies, every single one of them. Uh, there was an assistant to Boris Karloff in Fear Chamber who was mentally disabled and who wa wa loved diamonds and he was feeding people or at least feeding people's fear to a living rock in fear chamber and uh because the ro living rock was promising this guy that he would give him diamonds well anyway that guy returns and is actually the main character in my opinion in this movie you can see him down here uh, his name, which he's got second billing here, is Eryet, Eryet, I do not know how to say this, Y-E-R-Y-E, Eryet, 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 uh, I don't know, I've never seen that name before, um, and his last name is Beirut, or Be Beirute, I actually don't know if that guy's Mexican or not, now that I now that I look at his name, that, that's an interesting name. And also, that guy definitely dubs his own lines because it's definitely the same voice in both movies, and he again plays a mentally disturbed guy. I don't know why <laughs> this guy is always playing a mentally disturbed character, uh, or mentally disabled character, I should say. Anyway, and this, this time, Boris Karloff is a scientist again, and this guy other character is is a ser a mentally disabled serial killer that kills women uh the premise of this is so wacky that it could have been really cool if it was like done well but um Boris Karloff invents a ray that can destroy anything and he says that he wants to use it to destroy objects that are in the way of progress. And he gives an example of a boulder. So like, instead of using a um, bulldozer or construction equipment to get rid of the boulder, you can use this ray and it just completely obliterates it. So of course, the Mexican, well, the German army wants to use it as a weapon. And also, they talk about nuclear energy and nuclear power in this movie and nuclear weapons in this movie because the movie was made in 1968 and that's something that, you know, post-World War II people talked about. I guess they forgot it was supposed to take place in 1890 Germany. So there are no nuclear technology. Um, Boris Karloff and his assistant who is a beautiful yet disfigured woman because her throat area and half of her face is disfigured and a dark red color. They accidentally use the ray 
to shoot a hole through the ceiling and the ray is so powerful that the blast goes into space and catches the attention of aliens and the aliens. Aliens come down to Earth to stop the Earthlings from having this weapon. At the same time, this other guy is a serial killer. He's killing women in what appears to be an indoor parking lot, but since it's 1890, I guess it's just supposed to be an underground area. <laughs> and somehow, even though he kills women after luring them into what seems to be a romantic encounter. Oh, and the guy is dressed up just like Jack the Ripper. He's got a top hat and everything. Um, even though there's all that, he has a girlfriend whom he does not ever harm. And she loves him even though she knows he's a serial killer. And in fact, she says that she's jealous that he keeps killing these other women and that if he likes killing so much, he should kill her because she's in love with him. Well, the aliens come down and find this guy's weak brain to be an easy target. And since the aliens, which they definitely stole this from, I forget what, but it happens in other movies of the 50s. And it happened in a H.P. Lovecraft story from probably the 1920s or 30s which I probably should have looked it up uh, to remind myself. Let's see, what's it called? Uh, I, I, I won't be able to remember it in a, in a reasonable amount of time. But the, the point here is that the aliens have no physical form. They are only, as Boris Karloff's character describes, made of pure thought. But if they touch you, they enter your mind and use your body to do whatever they want. Um... So, I think I probably mentioned it before, but I think it's a major cop-out when you make an alien movie and the aliens don't look like anything and then they just use the human bodies. So it's just regular people that say they're aliens. We did this in, uh, or they did this in Alien, no, this is Alien Terror. What was that movie with the werewolf with Paul, Paul Nashi? The second Paul Nashi film did the same exact thing. The aliens look like humans. There's a bunch of movies from the 50s that did the same thing. It's just because there's no budget to this movie. Um, the serial killer kills someone with a razor early on. You don't see the razor touch the woman. It cuts off screen. The woman clutches something, which at first I thought was supposed to be her own scalp. Because it looked like hair. Then I thought maybe it was just a brown piece of clothing. I watched this on YouTube because I, it's not anywhere else. Um, and the quality isn't that great. I thought she was clutching a scalp, but then later they showed her dead body and she had her hair on her head. So who knows what that was? Anyway, the aliens take over this guy's body. Then they take over Boris Karloff's body and they try to get them to destroy the machine, which probably should be done anyway. Yet it seemed to be some giant antagonistic act because Boris Karloff, I guess, doesn't really want to destroy the machine, but he doesn't want the military to get it. And it just turns into a giant mess. Like, the, the setup is all right, but then after that, it's like, what is even going on? There's kind of, um, similar to Brain of Blood, the brain of the original serial killer kind of, like, tries to take over, and you get this melding of the alien brain and the serial killer brain tries to kill other people, and Boris Karloff, like, sometimes the alien has control, sometimes the uh, benevolent Boris Karloff scientist has control, and there's, like, this guy that wants to marry Boris Karloff's niece. Boris Karloff's niece is always wearing a dress from the 1890s, so, like, it constantly reminds you that it's supposed to take place in the 1890s, but none of the rest of the movie feels like it is. Um, so, overall, I'll give it a 4 out of 10, Unless you're like me and you like torturing yourself by watching every single movie out there, I wouldn't really watch this one. Or if you want to watch every single Boris Karloff movie out there. Although, this is probably one of his worst movies. He's not in it as much as he is in a lot of other movies. He wasn't doing well. He's 81 years old. He passed away very shortly after this was created. And then it was released two years after he passed away. Uh, in preparation and celebration 
of this movie and Boris Karloff. All week I watched Boris Karloff movies. And I'm at the point where I have seen most of the classic 30s, like universal Boris Karloff movies. So I was watching all the less classic 30s Boris Karloff movies like... Oh, what did I watch? Well, actually, I watched The Raven, which was really good. Uh, I watched... What else did I... I watched, like, three that I didn't... I watched Mr. Wong Detective. Didn't like that one at all. Boris Karloff's supposed to be Chinese in that one. It's not good, even if you look past that. Um, what else did I watch? I watched Devil's Island. That one was decent. He was a scientist. No, he was a doctor, a surgeon, who got put on a French prison island for saving a traitor's life. Uh, that one was decent. It was kind of like a prison prison break movie. That, that one was pretty good. That was from 1939. Um, there were a few other, ooh, what else did I watch? Some, some really bad ones, just really boring. Um, well, anyway, yeah, this one gets a four out of 10. There's one more of these, but I don't think it was released until 1972. So we're gonna take a break from the Mexican Karloff movies and do something else next time. All right, see you then.